In order to understand the mechanisms behind pandas, we have to understand the brain structure. The brain has got several areas. The brainstem, the parietal lobe, the cerebellum, the frontal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. But in pandas, the area that we're most concerned about is deep inside the brain, an area called the basal ganglia. This is composed of two main parts, the chordate nucleus, responsible for fine motor control, and the lentiform nucleus, implicated in conditions such as Tourette's, where there are obsessive compulsive behaviours. Importantly, these two areas are closely related to other parts of the brain, including the amygdala, the claustrum and the insula. In pandas, what happens is that we get a streptococcal infection, which then results in the production of antibodies that unfortunately go on and stimulate the brain. This stimulation causes inflammation, and that inflammation spreads throughout the brain, resulting in symptoms including tics, obsessive compulsive behaviours, and other features, including misophonia, which is when sounds can sound distorted or uh, louder than normal, and sometimes, um, unfortunately, uh, misinterpreted as hyperacusis, POTS or paediatric orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, bedwetting, problems with eating, and features which can be akin to autism. The introduction of antibiotics and or anti-inflammatories results in a down regulation of this inflammation and the treatment of the underlying cause, which is the infection. Eventually, the brain will calm and the inflammation will die down. And when this happens, the symptoms will begin to resolve. As the infection is no longer present, we, we lose the antibodies that were causing the problem and eventually over time the brain normalises. At this point, we can remove the antibiotics and the anti-inflammatories.